Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a DIY custom closet like this on Modern Builds. So welcome to my closet. This space could not be more standard. It's 76 inches wide and 21 inches deep to the frame. It was featured in my previous upload, the DIY bedroom renovation, and today it's time to tackle this mess. As you can see, I've already removed the sliding mirror doors, but I took them out carefully because I'm gonna be painting them a custom color later on in this video. I also went ahead and scraped the popcorn ceilings and painted the concrete floors gray in that previous bedroom episode. And now it's time to patch up some of these holes in the drywall that I created during demolition. And to do that, I'm gonna be using this high strength large hole repair kit that's all in one from 3M. This repair plate screen is really cool. It's got adhesive on the back and it bends so that you can fit it through the hole in your drywall and then it adheres to the back. This kit is great. It's got everything you need. The patch itself, spackle, a putty knife, along with a piece of fiber tape so that you get a good, strong patch. And finally, a sanding pad so that you can smooth everything out. Once I had all of the large holes repaired in my drywall, I came back and I applied a skim coat to the two walls of the closet that are not gonna be covered by plywood. Now I did this in the rest of the bedroom, but a quick version here in the closet. Instead of using a high nap paint roller to apply the watered down joint compound, I used my 10 inch drywall knife and I applied it as smooth as possible. After it dried, I came back with this 3M Pro Grade Precision Sanding Tool with 220 grit and smoothed out and knocked down any high points. Now this process didn't build as thick of a skim coat as the rest of the bedroom, but it is super smooth to the touch. I'm proud to say that Scotch Painters Tape is a sponsor of today's video, and I'm gonna be using their Sharp Lines Painters Tape to mask off an edge between the walls and the concrete. As you all know, I don't have any baseboard trim in the bedroom for a modern look, so I wanna make sure that I've got a really clean reveal. I'll be featuring more Scotch Painters Tape and other 3M products throughout the video, all available at your local Home Depot or online. This is my regular stop before pretty much every DIY. I picked up some Scotch Sharp Lines Painters Tape as well as Delicate Contractor and this giant roll of Scotch Blue yes. Original Painters Tape. No matter what your project is, just know that Home Depot has your back and to always hashtag start with Scotch. That way you get the best results possible. Big thanks to Scotch Painters Tape. Links are down in the description. Now let's get back to the build. Now that we've got smooth walls, it's time to paint them flat white to match the rest of the bedroom. I made sure to paint everything, even the walls that are getting covered in plywood because why not? And I used this Glidden Premium that did a really good job of getting coverage in one coat. And that concludes our drywall and paint portion of this episode. Now let's head out to the shop and do some woodworking. I started by breaking down a couple of sheets of three quarter inch thick radiata pine plywood down to a little less than 38 inches wide. I want it so that two panels fit against the back wall of the closet with a little bit of wiggle room. This whole modular closet system depends on what are called French cleats, and they're basically pieces of wood that you make by cutting 45 degree bevels down the center of two boards that nest together. One piece goes on the wall and the other goes on whatever you wanna hang onto the wall. This creates a really cool interlocking joint that is really strong, pretty much as strong as the material you make it out of as long as you do it right, which we're gonna get into. I started by attaching my fringe cleats to the wall panels on the bottom and then I spaced them out every 18 inches. The wood glue is what's gonna be holding these pieces together long term, but I did use brad nails to hold everything in place while the glue dried. And I should mention, I inset my French cleats a little bit from the edge of the plywood, about a half of an inch on the wall side and about two inches on the middle side. As always, I used some wood filler to cover up the blemishes left by the brad nailer. Then I could load up a 3M Pro Grade Precision Sanding Disc on my random orbit sander. In this clip, you can see just how well a brad nailer with a little bit of wood filler works. I sanded everything up to 220 grit, and then I applied two coats of water-based polyurethane in satin finish. Lately, I've been using these foam application pads, and they really work great, especially on anything with some tight inside corners, like on these fringe cleats. And this little strip of plywood is about a half of an inch thick, and it's what I'm using as a spacer between the floor and these plywood panels. Getting these pieces in place was not easy, but it worked out. 
I made sure to grab my level and double check everything so that it was as square to the earth as possible, and then I started screwing it in. I made sure to pre-drill all of my holes and mark for the studs before install, and that made this process super easy. The studs were located in different places on the second panel, but the steps were the exact same, and I was really happy with how everything was turning out so far. And this is where I should mention, if you're enjoying this video, make sure and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you stay updated every time I post a new project. Oh, and if possible, make sure the grain on your French cleats is also running vertically. That way they blend in a little bit better. Next, we need to build the shelves that are going on those French cleats. And I started cutting down some 18 inch wide strips using a straight edge and my circular saw. Lately, I've been keeping these 48 inch two x fours around as my cutting boards and they've been working really nicely. For all of my full length shelves, I just used my actual French cleats to mark and cut them to fit. A 12 inch speed square is a go to straight edge for me whenever I'm doing cross cuts like this. Hopefully all of these assembly steps are gonna make sense and I'm gonna do my best. First, I used wood glue and brad nails to attach my French cleat to the back piece of the shelf. Then I used another three quarter inch piece as a spacer to make sure that the back of my shelf was flush with that back piece. I nailed everything together and this held things in place, but I definitely needed to add more strength to these shelves. So I broke down some more plywood into these triangles and these pieces are gonna help make sure that my shelves are actually at 90 degrees, but they'll brace everything so it's extra strong. Throughout this process, I was kind of winging it, but I was really liking how everything looked and how it was turning out. The shelves were very strong and I didn't mind having these triangular supports. I think it added some cool geometry. But I did make one big mistake that I really wanna show you guys so that you don't repeat it. Now obviously, my floating shelves work and they hold a decent amount of weight, about 10 or 15 pounds. But as you can see, I should have extended my shelf further down that French cleat so it was flush to the bottom. This would have given me a stronger positive stop, but no big deal, just make sure and not make that same mistake. I did a quick fix for this by adding another piece of plywood on my shelves that are going above the closet rod. This is gonna give me a strong positive stop and you can see just how strong they ended up being in this next clip. And if you take on a French cleat project for yourself, I'll be sure to leave a couple links in the description to some videos I learned from. Be sure to check those out. I thought it would be neat to make a couple of examples of different organizers and shelves. So here I'm making some plywood boxes that are half width for each of my closet sides. I'm really excited to see the different versions of this project that you all make. So if you do, make sure and tag me at Modern Builds on Instagram so I can see. I made sure that the French cleats on these boxes allowed for plenty of reference surface with the other French cleat on the wall and these ended up being really strong. Super bro. Now I couldn't have a video sponsored by Scotch Painters Tape without adding a little bit of accent color to this space, especially considering all of the different pops of colors I've used in this bedroom. I used more sharp line tape to line out a couple of stripes that I'm gonna paint one blue and the other soft yellow to match the rest of the colors in that bedroom. One more big thanks to Scotch Painters Tape for sponsoring today's episode. And if you're interested in learning more about any of the products they make, make sure and follow the links down in my description. I needed to apply two coats of paint to cover up that plywood grain, and then I let it set for about an hour before removing that painter's tape. I was pretty fortunate to have a flat piece of plywood for my dividing wall, but I still installed a spine with a one x four that I cut out of plywood on the back side. This is also gonna help mount it to the plywood panels in the closet. I used these two pieces of three quarter inch plywood screwed together as my spacers to clamp everything knowing that it's centered in that one x four. Like everything else, I applied a couple coats of polyurethane before installing it, and then I screwed it in place, making sure it was level to the eye and level to the earth.
Next, it was time to attach the closet rod hardware, and this was really easy to do. I was able to find some studs behind the drywall, and then mounting to the plywood couldn't have been more simple. I did make sure to pre-drill before screwing with an eighth inch bit though. I'm using these adjustable closet rods for now, but I'll probably cut down some single pieces to use in the future. I used Scotch Blue Original Painters Tape to mask off the glass on my sliding mirror doors before I spray painted them soft yellow. I painted the linen closet and the door for the bedroom this same color, so it's gonna be really cool having everything match. Now, of course, this isn't gonna be as sturdy as powder-coated hardware, but I don't really think that that's available, even though it probably should be. My final step was to reinstall that hardware after the paint had cured and this DIY closet build out was complete. But before the big reveal, let's go back and see what this closet looked like day one. No, it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it wasn't good and it had a long way to go. Now let's check out these afters. I really don't have the craziest wardrobe out there, so being able to display it all in a way that's functional and looks good is so exciting for me. I built a few different depth and versions of shelves and organizers as an example, but I'm really excited to see what you all make if you build out a project like this. I learned a lot from this project. I made a couple of mistakes with my French cleats, but I won't repeat those in the future. So hey, good learning experience if you ask me. And here's the whole build out without any doors. That way you can see everything. Honestly, I think it looks really good without them. So in this half of the closet, I've got the Modern Build starter pack, the white tees, the blue jeans, and boots. I'll make sure and leave links to that stuff down below. This is honestly what I wear six, sometimes seven days a week. But this whole setup is really cool because if you ever needed some full length hanging, you can do that by just removing one of these boxes and you are good to go. I just don't have any dresses or trench coats uh, for staging. On the other half of the closet is where I've got everything that is not modern builds related. These are all my fun clothes. They're also nice, they're a little more incognito. But as you can tell, both of these sides are set up the exact same, they're mirror images. And I imagine a lot of people might wanna build out a custom closet in a guest room, office, or spare bedroom setup, which is where I think it would be really cool to dedicate one side of the closet to clothing and hanged storage, while on the other side, it can be all utility shelving for whatever is most useful to you. No matter how you build or set up your closet, if you build something inspired by this setup, I would love to see. Make sure and tag me at Modern Builds. I would also like to give one more huge thanks to 3M for sponsoring today's episode. Be sure to follow those links down in the description and we will see you next time on Modern Builds. 